Page 44, Shining Stars. Well, this looks like a mess. Let's take a look at this. At the top of the page, they're introducing you to a new note for the bass clef staff, and that is the G. That is the top space in the staff with bass clef is a G. It's the G below middle C. Middle C is here, so it's this G. So now we've had all these notes from G to G in the music. They show them to there. I leave it to you to memorize these notes, really. If I were your teacher, I'd be drilling you this on every lesson until I'm convinced you know these notes instantly. You do the play it and say it drill. And here you have E, D, C, A, G, G, E, D, C, A, G, E, D, M. Forget the rhythm. You just play and say the note over and over and over. Huh. Look it over. I see it's uh, a little over a page long because it's all of page 45 and one line is on page 44. I could count the lines. I'm too lazy to. I just want an idea of how long it is. It doesn't need to be exact. It's treble bass clef, 4-4 four, four time signature. I see quarter notes and a half notes and a whole notes. And we have a mess there on the last line on page 45. So we'll have to talk about that. It's showing the sections, the A, B, A1 section, member sections, so like chapters in a book or the sections in a piece of music. So when you learn it, you might tackle it just a section at a time. You can break up a longer piece into little pieces and you attack the little pieces and get them and then you put them together for the long piece. If it's a longer piece, you don't just take it and try and learn it all the way through. Don't recommend it. It's a good way to fail. Just take it in little pieces at a time and build it up over time. I'm going to kind of take both hands together until we get down to the last line on page 45. So the right hand starts here. That puts the hand here. The left hand starts here, second on A. That puts the hand here. So we're in this position right now. You don't need the other finger numbers. Just leave them alone. This is one, two, three, four. Let's go over to measure nine. Remember the numbers at the beginning of the lines in the little boxes are measure numbers. So measure nine, you can find it, so that's section B. In the left hand, we have the G and the A together. They can't stack them like that, there isn't room. So they, but they come on the same beat, so you play them together. One, two, three, four. And then the right hand has a C and an E together. Two, This is nice. What kind of a star is this? Let's go down to this mess at the bottom. Measure 17. You have the same notes you've been playing. You're just doing both hands at the same time. So you have these in the left hand and this in the right hand. All four notes at once. Well, this will be nice. Where's my coffee? In the second measure there, or measure 18. The lift, don't worry about the lift. You got. You have to move your hands. It's an 8VA and there's a note for both hands. You see the rule for 8VA? It only applies to the staff it's next to. So if they want both hands to do it, they either have to put the 8VA above both staffs, and some publishers do, or they put in both hands. So now both hands are going, it's the same notes, you're just up here, whatever they are. Here. And then the next measure, it's a 15 MA, both hands. Well, that's two octaves up here, up here. Here. And you see all those curved lines in the last two measures, all those notes? They're tied. Those are ties. And in a chord like this, when you have multiple notes like this, every note needs its own curved line. You can't just use one curved line for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So the last line is here. Two, three, four. Well, that's a problem. What are we doing? There's no rest. There's no time to do this. You simply lift up and move. So you know where you are and which fingers are there. You need to know where you need to be. You simply practice this so you can make this and get all four notes correct. Here to here. You don't want a lot of 
space emptiness in between them. It's not a quick jerky motion or nothing. You just simply lift up and move. It's like lifting up on the, between the phrases. Well, here you're lifting up, but you're also moving is all it is. Here, and here, and then here. You just have to know where you're at. You just practice this. Over and over until you kind of get the idea. Yeah, and that's what we're doing here. So once you have an idea what the hands are doing, and we put in the articulation. That's the slurs, accents or whatever, here. I don't see any accents per se, but put in the slurs. Actually, these are phrase marks. These are musical sentences, the musical thoughts. So you can lift up between each one. If they were slurs, you wouldn't have to lift up between each one. You might, but you don't have to. Here, lift up. Lift up. Lift up. Like so. Now, uh, measure nine with these. You play them as connected as you can, is all. You can't connect them because they're repeated notes. But that... okay. Then the dynamics. F at the beginning. Forte is loud, whatever you think loud is. And then on measure five, it's soft. We're going to echo that. put in the word echo up there. It's it's part of interpreting the music. You think echo. La, 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 la. Well, you think echo. You, you're playing the same thing you were playing, but you're playing it softer. Measure nine, we're loud again. Then you, we echo that. Then we're loud. And the last line, you're starting loud. And then you go soft. And then you say as soft as possible up here. Don't use the soft pedal, that's cheating. We've got to learn to do this control with the hands. Just real gently with a loose wrist here. Just how soft can you make that? The slower the note goes down, the softer it is. So just by, by doing this, it actually goes down slower. Because if I push straight down, it goes down. But if I do at an angle, the downward motion is slower because I'm going at an angle rather than down. And that's what this is about here. The kicker is getting them all down at the same time. Because when you're up here, it's easier to hear when they're not at the same time. When it's down here, you can be a little off and it'll still sound like you played them at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, careful on that. You want them at the same time if possible. Now, uh, once I get the dynamics out of the way, speed, just moving gently, I guess it's a gentlest. Everybody's speed will be a little different on this. It has to be accurate, so you decide on your speed. Remember the natural accents? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. three, four. Feel the natural accents here. Now they've added pedal, which will smear everything up because they're putting pedal down at the beginning and they're holding it down through the whole thing, lifting it up at the end. Well, if that's all they're going to do, I'm not going to show pedal because you, you can do that. Push the note down first at the beginning and then push the pedal down immediately after the note, just like we've been doing before. And then at the end, when the hands come up, the pedal comes up at the same time. Otherwise, you're just holding the pedal down through the whole thing. One way of doing it, please don't copy me. You take it at a little different speed. You don't have to go that fast. However fast you want your star to go, that's fine.
Now remember I said earlier it's in sections and that's a way of learning it. For instance, just tackle section A. Get section A where you can play it correctly, you're, you're fine with it, and then put it aside, forget about it. Go to section B and work on that. Get that. When you get that, put it aside and go back to the A1. A1 means it's the same as section A with a little different. It's a little different. So make sure you have that and then put all that mess aside and then focus on the coda. A coda is like a caboose on a train. They don't use cabooses anymore. It's, it's a tag. It's an afterthought. The, it, in most codas, that's not really part of the piece per se. The piece ends right before the coda. Here, it would end on measure 16. That's it. We're done. The piece is over. Then the coda is an afterthought. After, so work on the coda. Here, here, and here. And then once you have that, then you go back and put it all together. And you'll find you will not have forgotten section A. You'll still be able to play it in section B. And, and it, this way you get it all learned equally. Because if you start at the beginning every time and go through to practice, you don't always finish it for one reason or another. So the beginning of it gets a lot of practice and the end of it gets very little. So, and you just gradually get worse as you go through it. That's a poor way to practice a piece of music. It's really inefficient. So I'm encouraging you, uh, when they give you these sections or for longer pieces, find the sections, do a, a section at a time and really focus on it. At the bottom of page 45, I have a little note to point out broken seconds, block seconds, broken third, whatever. So if you want to do that, a second, remember, is just next to it. So a broken second is like at the beginning. Here to here, that's a second. That's another second. And then we go to here, well, that's a third. Because those are, that's a third apart. So broken third. And then a broken second. And the blocked is when you play them at the same time, like a measure 15, or 9, excuse me, measure 9. They're together. That's a, a blocked second. And then a measure 10. That's a blocked third. Those, you'll learn to recognize them in the music. This helps prepare for stuff coming up. So let's keep it in mind for now. Let's play this together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. And I'm not going to do the dynamics. We're just checking notes and rhythms. So I'll give us four counts. Oh, I'm not doing the pedal either because you can hear the notes better without the pedal. One, two, ready, go. a duet part for this. I'd like to play that and you play your part. I need you to go up an octave again so just pretend middle C instead of here is here and instead of here you're up here. When you do this and you get to the end you're going to run out of notes so when you go up here on uh, measure 17 you're already up here so on the next measure when you go up you can either stay there or go up, it's up to you. But in the last two measures, you can't, I, you, if you have a really long keyboard, you can probably do that, you go all the way up here. 
But if you have a shorter keyboard, you just play the highest notes you have. And that's close enough, whatever they are. Good enough. We have to make these adjustments whenever we start moving around. So you might be able to play the coda here, and then here, and then here. But if you can't, then you either go here, here, or one of them. You, you decide on how you're going to do the coda. I'll speed this up a little bit. It says you can play it without pedal. If you're playing with someone on the duet and you're on the same keyboard, they will do the pedal, not you. You don't have to worry about the pedal. But if you're doing it on your own, that's up to you. If you pedal it, that's fine. One, two, ready, go.